Even though we now know that the Federal Reserve is no longer planning to wreck the economy with a slew of unnecessary rate hikes, there's still a ton of uncertainty in this market. We've got worries galore from the pullback in the price of oil, never good for stock prices in the near term, to UK's vote on whether or not to leave the EU next week, uh, to continue concerns about global growth. In short, this is the kind of environment where you want to own nice, consistent companies that can thrive even in times of international turmoil or economic weakness. Which brings me to longtime Kramer fave, Henry Schein, HSIC. That's the largest distributor of dental and veterinary products on Earth, in addition to being a major supplier of vaccines and other medical devices. If you're looking for a business without much economic sensitivity, dentistry and veterinary medicine are about as good as it gets. Make things even better. Henry Schein's dental supply business, number one player in what some people regard as a slap-happy oligopoly. More than 40% market share, though, including everything from the terrifying dentist chairs to the composites, crowns, implants that end up in your mouth if you don't take care of your teeth. Hey, this one's a classic case, classic case of uh, no pain, no gain. Plus, while Henry Schein has nice and s- consistent, steady organic growth, it's really also a consolidator. It's grown by leaps and bounds by making a series of small acquisitions over the years. Stock has given us a juicy more than 13% gain since we last looked at the CEO, and I pounded the table for you to buy it roughly seven months ago. And the economy's, uh, the company's most recent quarter, I liked it very much. But the stock's pulled back. It's now down six bucks from its highs. This could be a major buying opportunity. Let's check in with Stanley Bergman. He's the chairman and CEO of Henry Schein. Get a better sense of how this company's doing and where it's headed. Mr. Bergman, welcome back to Man Money. Thanks, see you, Good to see you. you know, we, we've often talked about how strong your company is and how it's in recession resistant, but we haven't talked about something that's allowed you to gain share. And that's very clear in this last quarter and last year you've been gaining share, which is that you are a digital technology company. A lot of companies claim that, but you have a device here that I think could show without a doubt that you're doing something digitally that is really reinventing the profession of dentistry. Thanks, Jim. And what we've been doing for actually many, many years is introducing dentists and uh, physicians and veterinarians to new technology. We are moving from analog dentistry to digital dentistry right now in front of our eyes. And that means, for instance, when I get a crown, unfortunately, I have many crowns. Right. It's a very labor-intensive process, and it's a process that requires multiple trips to the dentist. Is that something that may be, five years from now, uh, troglodyte? Well, we're moving towards the replacement of the manual crown where you use the impression material right. the, uh, 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 as the basis for the crown. Yeah, that's how it starts. Right. And we're moving that to, towards a digital impression where you can take the impression digitally, move that information chair side where your crown or bridge can be milled chair side, or move it to the dental laboratory where the crown or the bridge could be fabricated digitally. This is relatively new, but it's catching on, and we're seeing more and more dentists use this, and at the same time, we're seeing more and more dental laboratories digitalize. How many trips to the dentist if I do this? Well, if you do the scan scan and send it to the lab, well, it's probably two visits. Okay. If you do it to a dentist that is comfortable taking the scan and having the crown or, uh, or bridge mill chair side, it's a couple of hours in the chair, one visit. One visit. But of course, we're early innings in a right. lot of this, and it's going to catch on just like computers in dentistry. Once Dennis understood the importance of computers in the 90s, it caught on pretty quickly. Right. Now, one of the things that I think that people don't understand is that because of devices like this, you can take share from other players. It's a, the, the overall growth is good, particularly because of the demographic, but you actually are taking share from the other players in the industry because of devices. Well, Jim, we've always grown based on the notion that we are introducing technology to dentists, veterinarians, and physicians. And that has enabled us to be a share grower because at the end of the day, the practitioners trust us to bring the newer technologies to them. We spend a lot of time with Zoetis and IDEX, and they're both very fine companies. I know you wear them. The, the companion animal business is actually growing at far greater why is that? Far greater than the, than the GDP. Yes. Well, uh, the uh, companion animal, the pet business, is growing throughout the developed world because of the middle class growing and because of the baby boomers growing. Baby so that's boomers what like pets. What? Baby boomers like pets. Yes. And therefore, uh-huh. and therefore, there are more vet- veterinarians, and more veterinarians need your products. Yes. So we have growing, we're growing our pet products throughout the world because of this driver of the growing middle class uh, supported by the 
baby boomers wanting more pets. And one of the things I like about your business, it, it's not concentrated. There's not any one or two customers that can right. really hurt you, are there? There are growing, some customers are growing. Right. That's particularly the case in the medical environment where healthcare reform is fueling growth in practices. And we see, of course, in dental and animal health. But our customers are relatively fractionalized and our suppliers are. Right. So at the end of the day, the market forces uh, work well for the customer, for the supplier, and for us. What we've been concerned about the premiums for Affordable Care Act, but there's absolutely true that it's a, a, that what we should care about with Henry Schein, right, is improved access. Yes. And that's good for your business. Yes. Healthcare reform is all about providing primary care services to the American public. Many, tens of millions of Americans did not have access to a primary care physician. So when they got sick, they'd have to go right to the hospital. Right. Healthcare reform is about prevention. The big debate is not about that move. It's about who's going to pay for it. And there you have the left and the right yes. debating that. But the fact that a physician should be provided to every American to prevent the American from getting sick right. is something that has worked well and works in our favor because those are our customers. Well, I want to tell people that if you're trying to figure out you can't own shares in doctors, you can't own shares necessarily in e the HMOs, I don't want you to do that. It's Henry Schein as a way to play the Affordable Care Act and all these other great things to do. That's Stanley Bergman, Chairman and CEO of Henry Schein. The stock's down too much from its high. It's, it's just a buy. I'm just going to put it straight out there. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.